Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I'm gonna to be sharing my top 10 must have craft tools for 2023. These are tools that some of them I've loved for a while. Some of them I just found this year and I can't wait to tell you. I've also got a few honorable mentions because honestly it was a little hard to narrow it down to 10. So let's jump right into this. Let's start off with an honorable mention. Now this one is probably not gonna be a surprise to most of you, but it's actually fallen down in the ranks since last year when it was kind of up there on the top 10 list. That's my Ladybug Tabletop Vacuum. This thing is great for if you work with glitter, that Dollar Tree moss, it really does pick up the stuff on your work surface. I do get a lot of questions about, hey, do you know how to do the batteries in this thing? So to, to clean it out, there's a button here that says push. That's pretty self-explanatory. You just push it, pull it down, and dump it out. To do the batteries, you take your hand and you ever so gently <laughs> kind of twist like this, pop it open, and that's how you change the batteries. So definitely would recommend it. It's less than $10 on Amazon. Everything I'm showing you today, today, I will definitely make sure to link down below in the description box, but honorable mention, my little ladybug tabletop vacuum. Honorable mention number two is going to be my hobby knife set from Arteza. So it comes in this little case, which is really, really nice, but inside of it, you get a really nice thick little cutting mat along with three different housings, which is nice. There's kind of the skinny, the medium, and then the extra big um, with a ton of different blades. The outside of the packaging has this little blade guide right here and I just cut it and set it inside there so that I know which blade I should use for what and y'all I use this thing all the time it definitely gets the job done Honorable mention number three. I told you guys I had a hard time narrowing this down. It's going to be silicone mats. So the silicone mat that I have on my surface now is gray. You guys have probably remember it, but you can get mats in all kinds of different colors, different sizes. And the beauty of these is that I really love it for two main reasons. Number one, when you paint, you can just paint and then just easily wipe it off when it's finished keep continuing using it. You're not wasting paper, all that good stuff. The second thing is when you're working with hot glue or even your heat gun, it protects your work surface from that. So definitely a good silicone mat, easy cleanup, different sizes, different colors. You can't go wrong with this mat. Now this next category, we're just gonna call it the pricey bougie category. This is another honorable mention. There are three things in this honorable mention category. The first thing is going to be an auto heat press. I know. An auto heat press. I have a regular heat press, but I didn't know I needed an auto heat press until I got an auto heat press. Now mine is from HTV Rod. It is a better price point than some of the other ones out there, and it does a really great job. I've not only used it for crafting, but I've used it to press pants. I use it to press my daughter's gown when she did her senior pictures. So it gets a lot of use. It's really fun to use, if I'm being honest, because it just like does all the work for you. But I really, really love that machine. The second thing is going to be a Cricut. Now, whether it's the Cricut Joy, which is the small, more compact little printer, it has a smaller work area, you can't really make the big designs, but if you just do small designs anyway, it's the perfect little machine. But if you were to get a big one, I would personally would go ahead and recommend the Maker 3, only because it can do a little bit extra than the Explore 3. You can do engravings, you can work with the wood veneer, I really like the Maker 3 better. And if you love to do crafts, make gifts, do personalized things, a Cricut is a great machine to have. The last thing I would recommend would be a sublimation printer. Now to do sublimation, you do have to have a designated printer for that. But sublimation just makes things look so high end in my opinion. You really get, the colors are just so rich and deep and you can pretty much sublimate on anything. So I definitely would recommend one if that's that's something that piques your interest. Those are the three big ticket items that I would recommend if you're looking to add something, maybe one thing per year, or you know, you're trying to get drop gift hints. Those are the three that I would drop. The next two honorable mentions have to do with silicone. So the first one is going to be this crazy little doodob, and this is just a nail polish bottle holder. This one I really like because it comes with kind of with this little suction cup on the bottom, so it holds it flat on my work surface. But what I use it for are those paint bottles that are kind of running out of paint, where you don't want to sit there every time and be like do 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 do, waiting for the paint to drip down. So I just put my bottles in there upside down. It holds it securely so that when I'm ready to get more paint. I just pick it up, squirt the paint out, and I'm good to go. 
The other silicone honorable mention is a makeup brush cleaner. I just picked this one up from Dollar Tree. This is my paint washing sink in my craft room. That's why it's so colorful and pretty. I just set it. It has suction cups on the bottom. I just set it on the bottom and y'all, it makes cleaning paint brushes so easy. You don't get your hands all messy. You just keep wiping it on there until the water runs clear and you're good to go. So definitely consider this. It's a very easy way to clean those paint brushes. Let's kick off this top 10 countdown. Coming in at number 10, this one is probably going to shock a lot of you. And that is a spray painting tent. That's right, I said it, spray painting tent. The girl who still really just doesn't enjoy spray painting. I purchased a spray painting tent just kind of a couple months ago along with the Lazy Susan and the little cone things that you put items on to kind of keep them up off the ground. Y'all, it's a game changer. It's totally a game changer. It's not a lot of space because you literally just pop it up, fold it down. Now I will say closing it, well, closing it is not so fun. Um, it takes a little bit of effort. It's actually kind of like folding a fitted sheet. There's really no point. You just kind of wad it up and hope that it stays in a wad. So I just kind of lean mine against the wall in the garage and it does fine. But if you do like to spray paint, definitely check out the spray painting tent. The number nine spot goes to a sculpting tool. A sculpting tool that is not used for sculpting. I have had this in my little crafting arsenal for a couple of years when I stole it from my daughter's craft supplies. But what I use it for is when I'm working with hot glue. So this end right here, that's like this little curved kind of hook thing is great for when you're working with hot glue, don't wanna burn your fingers. You can use this to hold it down, peel the glue off. You can also use a silicone spatula, which you guys have probably seen me use my green one. That's another great tool to have. The other end is like this little sharp kind of indented little U thing. And what that's great for is, you know, when you go to put glue, let's say on a bead and you press it down and you get kind of that overflow on the edges, you can take this even after the glue's dried and run it and it essentially cuts all that extra glue off of the edges. So it acts kind of like a little blade, but it because it's curved, it gets right in there and does the job perfectly. So I don't know that you can buy this tool by itself. You might be able to, but a full sculpting set is really, really cheap. So definitely grab yourself this sculpting tool to help you work with that hot glue. Now, number eight is an actual tool tool, and that is a screwdriver. And you're probably thinking a screwdriver, but this one's really special because number one, it comes with, let me show you here all of these different tips okay you can get all of these different tips for all the different sizes to click in to the screwdriver but what i really like about it is it has an auto crank and what that means is so when you go to put something on there see here how it goes like this you literally if you're trying to screw something you can just do short little turns like this instead of like where you were using your hand and you're having to do the whole wrist motion it literally is just like this quick little thing makes it so nice so if you're not a fan of power tools this is the best next best thing to having like an actual power drill so this one's by craftsman um i don't know if there's other brands that make this but i absolutely love the screwdriver if you like to work with canvases, then you definitely need number seven on this list, and that is a heavy duty staple remover. So this staple remover, you can kind of see, it has like this little U kind of looking thing here, and it's thicker. This thing makes getting those staples out of the canvases so easy. A lot of you guys ask me what it is, and it literally is so easy to pop those out. So if you do a lot of staple work, <laughs> I would totally recommend getting yourself a heavy duty staple remover. Sliding in to the number six spot is going to be my Fiskars paper cutter. Now this thing has a lot of neat features. Number one, I love that it has this so that I can do an extra big piece of paper. Number two, on the board right here, it has measurements. Like if you do cards or anything like that, it's got like five by seven, four by six. It shows you where you need to put the piece of paper to get those measurements if you're a scrapbooker. But what I really like about it is if you have, let's say a scrapbook piece of paper and you drew a pencil line, you slide it in here, there is a it's like silver line on here. And so when you slide your paper in there, you can get that line lined up exactly with your pencil mark. And so you know exactly where your blade's gonna go. So if you work with any type of scrapbook paper, I definitely would recommend just splurging a little bit and getting yourself this paper cutter. 
Holding to the number five spot is going to be my tin snips. If you work with any type of florals or wire, these are a must have. You really shouldn't use your scissors to cut those things because it dulls the blades. It can also damage them, but tin snips literally make cutting those wires, especially the Dollar Tree, if you use their florals and the greenery, so easy. It's They're very comfortable, easy to grip. It's kind of got these finger grippers so that you never lose your grip on it. So definitely would recommend a good pair of tin snips. The number four spot goes to two items, but they're pretty much the same item, and that is heat guns. So you need two different heat guns in your craft stash. This one is a crafting focus heat gun. It's good for doing paint drying you can do crackling with it you can do some wood some wood burning with it if you use like a scorch marker things like that but what i really like about this one is it has a really nice easy grip so you can grip it like this and kind of get a more concentrated heat by controlling exactly where the heat flow is going but i really like the stand on it because you can set it on your thing go hands free which is a really nice feature i actually use that feature all the time now for the big one this one is the one i would recommend for any type of wood burning especially if you're using using torch paste, which you guys know I've fallen in love with that stuff. This one is from Seek One and it actually comes with several different tips, which is really, really nice. So I would totally recommend having two different heat guns because the temperatures are not the same. And let me just say, all heat guns are not created equal. Now, number three might surprise you. It actually surprised me when I was kind of assessing my tools, trying to figure out, okay, what do I use a lot? What do I really love? That's this little tool right here, okay? This was actually in a weeding tool set that I got. And all it is is, I mean, it looks like an ice pick. It just comes to a very sharp little point. But I have used this thing for so many things. So, so many things. Now, they have something called, and I don't know how to pronounce this, okay? I'm gonna put the word up here on the screen somewhere. I don't know if it's an awl or an owl, but it's essentially that tool that you use when you're working with leather. Leather, Like I know what the tool is, but I just don't know how to pronounce it. That's that. So that's another one that you can pick up. If you type in AWL into Amazon, a little tool like this will pop up with a very sharp point. So I definitely think you would be surprised how much you will use a tool like this. Totally recommend it. We're down to the top two. Do you have an idea of what my number one is? Well, let me show you number two first. That is going to be my rotary tool. So again, if you are not a fan of power tools, this thing is great. This is the little thing that I have used. You can, it comes actually with tons of little attachments, but I pretty much only use the little drill bit attachment for this. It is a great tool to have you will be surprised how much you use it. So I definitely recommend, I mean, it goes through wood. It's just, it's not scary. <laughs> it doesn't sound scary. It's easy to use and it gets the job done. So I definitely would recommend adding a rotary tool to your craft tools for next year. And the number one spot goes to, it's probably no surprise, for the second year in a row, it is my miter shears. These things are a beast. I absolutely love these. I use them to cut all kinds of wood, dowel rods, wood planks, popsicle sticks, clothespins, like literally cut so many things. Now, I will say that um, these right here that I have, I kind of have the, I don't know what you want to call it, short squatty body right here. They have some that kind of come up at a point and the blade is a little bit longer. I'm actually going to be purchasing those and adding them to my stash for next year to kind of see if I prefer one style or over the other, or if I feel like, you know, I really need both styles. So I will keep Keep you updated on that. Also, when it comes to changing the blade, number one, you really don't have to do it that often. But number two, on my YouTube channel, you can go look in my shorts and I have a quick little dedicated video on how to change the blade. I put it there just for quick reference so that when you're, you know, further down the line, if you forget how to do it, you can quickly access it. So that's always there for you as well. But definitely recommend adding this. If you add nothing else from this list and you don't have these, 100% recommend adding miter shears to your stash. And there you have it. That is my top 10 plus some honorable mentions must have craft tool list for 2023. Let me know down below in the comments, are there any tools that you really feel like I should add? Any suggestions you have? Because I know people love to read the comments and you might have some good ideas that no one's heard about or I haven't heard about because I'm always interested in trying new tools. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.